All right. Hey, guys, everyone. I'm Cynthia Conte for Ring TV, and I got her back. I got the new, the new <laughs> undisp undisputed welterweight queen, Jessica Caskilla McCaskill. Welcome back. Last time I spoke to you, you told me you're going to dethrone Cecilia Bracus. Months later, you dethroned her. Let's yeah. let's go back to that night in Tulsa, Oklahoma, under the stars. Um, you told me that you were going to out brawl her, out just out do everything about her, and you did not you're going to end her reign right there. What did you see with Cecilia this time, this time around? Um, with the rounds, I just, I felt like I didn't see what I was used to seeing with her. I don't really um, watch a lot of her fights, but just from um, what I knew, she was more of a boxer, um, moved a lot. And I figured they would either do that or they would come right at me. And I felt like they, they did their best version of coming at me. Okay, uh, it is true that Cecilia is m normally a boxer. And I remember I did, when I did interview her, a lot of people always complained, well, you only stick to boxing, why not brawl? Uh, so, you know, maybe she changed up the game plan because she knows you're a brawler. Uh, did, how, how was her power? Rate her power. No power. I haven't fought any girls. I mean, I spar with men on a regular basis. I haven't sparred with any females um, this whole time training for this fight. So I don't really... I haven't had any power from any of the females that I fought. Wow. Well, I mean, you out, you out punched her 499 to 269. That was what the punch count was. Were you a little surprised with the judges uh, scorecards? One of them had it a draw and the other, both of them, the other two had 97, 94. Well, you know, when you, you go into a fight, um, when you're fighting a reigning champion, you feel like you have to put her down and you have to get the knockout to get the win. So that's always something that's kind of looming in the back of my head. And, um, you know, even, even with that being the case, we're definitely going into this fight, not saying like, Hey, we're reigning champion. We're going in with a B side mentality. Like we're going to have to scrap all the way, just like every other fight. Um, but with, with the scorecards, you know, when you hear that first one and you, you don't really, you feel like that's going to kind of, um, shape the rest of the cards. And so mm -hmm. you hear the draw and I'm thinking, man, I felt like I really just had a lot of output and I was really hoping that it wasn't going to be like a draw. I mean, draw is not the worst thing to have, but that's definitely not what you want as a fighter because then it's like, if I would have just done this, if I would have just done a little bit more, it kind of drives you a little crazy. And we saw that a lot of people thought maybe it could have been a draw. Maybe Cecilia thought she pulled out the win. Maybe you thought you thought you did. She says that uh, she doesn't feel that you deserve this win. I mean, you were you just happen to be the better fighter. The judges saw it that way. But do you see yourself going in as the B side, even though you are the you are the undisputed uh, queen now? How do you feel going into this rematch that she activated? We're, we're going in like we're B-side. We're going in as the mentality is we're going to have to fight for every single thing, every round, every judge's score. Uh, we're going in just kind of how we've always gone in, just thinking that we have to uh, really show something spectacular that night, woo the crowd, and make sure the judges can see very clearly that um, Cecilia's outworked, um, that she's hit the canvas, you know, something to that nature. Now, I was just going to ask you, what do you see that you're going to have to do different this time? Because if she doesn't hit the canvas and if she decides to box, uh, what are you going to do? I mean, I know you you I know you are a brawler, but Rick Ramos, your trainer, has has now taught you to box. I, I mean, is that what you're going to I mean, I don't like a I mean, boxing is fine. It's fun. Yeah. But I like to see knockouts. I'm sorry. Yeah. We all do. I, I like to provide them. So I really hope I'll be <laughs> But um, we're ready for anything. You know, if she comes at us, we're ready for that. If she wants to move, we're ready to move. Um, the training's there. The conditioning's there. You know, we got back after that last fight. And I think they made me take about a week off. And then I was back in the gym. Uh, now, with the inkling of her post-fight uh, interview, we, I mean, I even thought that maybe she was going to hang up her gloves. She, she had a very good interview. It was it was alluding to that, that maybe she was just going to retire. Um, but did you think she was going to retire at that time? No, I mean, we know how, 
it's it's all very uh just politics you know it's kind of just what line to say at the right time kind of a thing and I think that was her way of not losing the whole night you know she got some sympathy um she got the crowd to kind of you know still talk about her and make her kind of the headline of the evening with that kind of conversation but honestly when I had my fight with um <laughs> with Sanchez um you know the the scorecards were really heavy on my side and she's a great fighter and no disrespect to her I, I didn't want that to be you know how the night ended I didn't want people to just say oh Jessica had an easy fight and she you know just out fought her and I thought it was a really great fight something great for the crowd that the last round one uh, round of the year mm -hmm. um so I made sure to give her her kudos and it's just good timing that kind of a thing and people were like oh Jessica this she's so nice for saying that and it's that's kind of how it comes off so the whole business you know when to say certain things and how to get blame started yeah, I mean, you. there was a very good camaraderie uh, that she was in her dressing room and you personally returned her belts uh, because usually you can just have a teammate or your coach or someone from their team pick it up. But I thought it was, you know, it was it was a nice gesture. But um, now it's back to bad blood. Is it really bad blood between you two? Because I, mean, I, I saw, let's go, let's talk about this little um, e press conference that... <laughs> That Eddie yeah. Hearn, of course, was just like, I don't think that you, she sees you as this A-class fighter. But is there really bad blood between you two? I mean, allegedly no. you said certain things. I I, I don't know. I'm not sure. No, there's, there's no bad blood. And and I and I never said anything in a fashion of, you know, um, talking trash. It was just kind of, you know, we, we stated that she was older and that was an advantage for me. Um, we stated that they had old training tactics, which is an advantage for me. It's not saying anything like, you know, oh, she's old as dirt. It's, it's not that kind of a thing. And there is no bad blood, but I didn't really have an appreciation for her kind of give up um, you know, kind of like toddler tantrum kind of attitude. I, I was really hoping to see her up in her chest out saying she was just going to do what she had to do to, to turn this around. And that, you know, then I could have countered that with like, all right, here we go. You know, just kind of like a very big female power kind of voice in the whole interview. And it, it didn't, it didn't, wasn't that kind of a thing. And so I think she just had the better responsibility as a boxer for her fans um, to, to kind of get over whatever like hierarchy she has of herself in her head and to be the boxer and be the example and be the role model that she should be. Well, now with Rick, you guys always look at the bigger picture. What is the bigger picture for you, Jessica McCaskill? I think, I think we've made it to um, a lot of the, the, the smaller things like winning titles and you know we still have the ring belt to win um the video games you know we want to make sure that we get into all of the different mediums as a boxer you know it's not just about stepping into the ring it's about having representation and and different in different places and signing other fighters and making sure that I'm using my skills um, for other people that want to come into the game and not necessarily just wasting them and retiring and go be on a beach somewhere. You know, I want to, you know, make sure that my roots are in the community and that I can do as much as I can to help others get through the path that I got. I'm so glad that I got to talk to you and um, I know that you're really busy because you're going to be going into fight week. You're, I know that you're probably hungry and you're gonna be, <laughs> no, <laughs> you're no. not hungry. No, I'm I see not you running right in the now. snow. How did you do that with the nasty weather that the East Coast and Midwest <laughs> got? I, I mean, you were running in like how many inches of snow were you running in? <laughs> Or was that just no, a photo op? <laughs> that, was, that was literally, coach was picking me up so I didn't have to drive my car, but he couldn't come down my street or else his car was going to get stuck. And so I had to like run like a couple blocks to get to him. And then we made it to the gym, but, um, you know, yeah, it's, it's part of like why you wear snow boots for like two months straight, you know, and it's, um, it, I mean, I'm sure Cecilia's not not um, running on paths that aren't cleared. You know, she's not running in like inches yeah. and inches of snow. But I mean, we do training in the gym every day. I don't have to starve myself, not one single bit. That's not how fighters should um, be. It's not how their Absolutely. training should be. I'm trying to be an example for these other females here. So, you know, they see me, I wouldn't wear plastic if you paid me. Um, I hate wearing plastic. So, you know, um, we'll do our, our last minute cut right before the weigh-ins, but it's not even going to be crazy. You know, we do um, our seven day weigh-in tomorrow with the WBC and I'll be 149 and 
by the time we get to the fight, I'll be 145. So, and in between now and then, I'm going to go get me some lunch. Ooh, you're making me hungry. <laughs> well, Jessica, thank you so much for taking the time. Can you tell your fans, Ring TV fans, why they should tune into the zone March 13 to see you with your first title defense of all your new shiny belts? Yes, come see me, Jessica McCaskill, T. McCaskill, Coach Rick Ramos. Um, we're going to put out for, for the fans. We're going to show out. I have one more belt to get, so you got to c- come with me to yeah. get that belt and come to the biggest retirement party on the zone where, where Cecilia is going to retire on live TV. Wow. Those are some bold words. <laughs> wow. Oh my. All right. So with your beautiful radio voice, will you send us out into the sunset? <laughs> okay. yes. You are watching the real fight with Cynthia and Jessica McCaskill. Tune in next time for more box news. Oh, that's my, oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. You guys tune in. Jessica McCaskill is defending her belt for the very first time against the former undisputed queen, Cecilia Breakus. She has promised to retire her March 13th. That is a, her official retirement party, as Jessica has said. So you guys tune in to zone. This is going to be a firefight. This is going to, th- there's some bad blood. I don't care what y'all <laughs> say. There is some real bad blood here. Good luck to you. Stay safe to you and your team. Both of you ladies stay safe in the ring. All right, guys. I'm Cynthia Conte for Ring TV. See you guys at the fights. Bye, guys.